This weekend, the new cop thriller Black and Blue hits theaters, so let's talk about it. When a rookie cop witnesses other police officers executing three unarmed men, she finds herself on the run from the police in a community that does not trust her. Hi, my name is Sean, and I love to talk about movies way too much. Be sure to tell me your thoughts on Black and Blue down below in the comment section. Are you excited for it? Have you even heard about it? Not your thing? Let me know down below. With that said, let's get started talking about the good. And the best thing about this movie for me is that it delivered the experience that the trailer promised. If you watch Watch the trailer, that's the movie that you're in for. It's kind of this tense thriller while someone is on the run with a camera with the evidence that can kind of clear her name and get justice for the men who were shot in a community that doesn't trust her. That's what the movie is, and it delivers what you're expecting from that premise. There's a lot of sneaking around, chases, a few shootouts here and there, but it's not really an action movie, but there's an experience experience that you're expecting, and you do get that. Oddly, if I were to kind of make a point of reference, it kind of reminded me of a few story arcs inside of the TV show 24, which 24 is a TV show that I absolutely love, and there were a lot of times where someone had the evidence, and they were trying to get it somewhere, and they were being chased by all sorts of different people. That's very much the vibe of what this movie is like. Overall, I thought the cast did a good job with the material that they were given. No one's given kind of these big, dramatic roles or anything like that but they suit the characters that they're in. Frank Grillo kind of plays the main bad guy inside of it and does just a great job as this corrupt cop. I love seeing him in thrillers like this. The one that's kind of interesting to me was Tyrese Gibson, who I primarily know him from the Fast and the Furious movies, playing uh, Roman, and Roman has just such a bravado to him and this very charismatic, quippy sort of personality, and that's not really what Tyrese does in this film. This is very much an acting type role of a guy thrust into this adventure that doesn't want to be in it. He gets a couple of his little lines in there that kind of put a little grin on your face, but for the most part, he's playing it as a guy that doesn't want to be in this situation, and he's not doing his usual routine, so I enjoyed seeing something different from him. And then while it is primarily a thriller, it's also a film that has something to say. Based off the premise, you can see how this is a film that ties to a lot of hot button issues inside of society right now, and it's a film I would imagine would play very differently depending on what audience goes to go see the film, but whichever side you kind of fall in light of certain discussions going on in society, I think it has a message that everyone can agree with by the time that you get to the end of the film. Maybe at times it's a little bit heavy handed in how it addresses some of these issues, but through the course of the story, I think it makes its point pretty clearly. From there, let's move on to the bad. The biggest issue I had with the film is that the basic premise of it requires a good bit of suspension of disbelief, especially having it take place in the year 2019. The whole movie, you're thinking, why doesn't she do this? Why doesn't she go on social media? Why doesn't she call a newspaper? Why doesn't she just direct dial the police station? Do you think that there's a whole bunch of other things that she could do in order to get some backup, get her story out there, but the whole movie relies on the concept that the only way to clear her name is for her body cam footage to be uploaded inside of the police station. That's not a spoiler. That's just the premise of the movie. But in the year 2019, there's so many different ways to get information out there, to get your story out there, that the idea of just playing it as this team of corrupt cops, just get all the cops against her, it, it's just tough to buy into that. And it required me to suspend more disbelief than I should have had to suspend. And I don't know if that's because they just didn't come up with a mechanism or they just really wanted to tell this specific story. Like it seemed like the sort of thing that another pass on the script, they could have put a few more pieces inside of it to explain why she didn't do some of these other things as it is. It was a little bit of a distraction to me that I kept, my mind kept wandering to all the other things she could have been doing. Another one is, it just feels a little bit familiar that there's corrupt cops, there's the witness that's on the run and seeks help from someone from the past. We've all seen all this before. It's a very 2019 take on that material because it deals with body cams and current tension um, uh, and resistance to police and things like that, but it's a lot of stuff that we've seen before. And then also the way that it handles its central message, I alluded to this before, pretty heavy handed in a way that it kind of presents 
everyone in the movie is corrupt and myopic in their view of people except our lead characters. She's the, the one person that sees kind of clearly everyone else just has these hard lines. You're on this side or on this side. Everyone is saying that to her and so then she can just preach at them a better way of living. That's awfully heavy handed way to communicate what you're trying to communicate. For me, it was an effective enough cop thriller. It delivered the experience that I wanted, though it's not one you need to rush out to see in the theaters and it's not particularly memorable. It's a B minus overall. It's a 6.5 on the entertainment scale. If you're interested, you can probably just watch this one on Redbox, but it will deliver the experience that you're looking for if you enjoyed the trailer. If you enjoyed this video, you can check out that video right over there for more content just like this one. Thank you so much for watching and keep talking movies too much.